Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott and I'm here today on a wintry Canadian day to uh, give you a quick video review of the Sigma 35mm f1.4 DG HSM Art Series lens. I uh, wanted to bring out Sigma's padded case because as I do in every Sigma review, I want to thank Sigma for the inclusion of an actually useful protective product, unlike uh, Canon who throws in with its L lenses a uh, slightly leatherized sock that is basically useless. This lens, and I recognize that I'm hardly the first to review the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens, but I've been using it as a kind of a comparison point for the new Canon 35mm f1.4L Mark II. And the fact that that is considered the benchmark, this lens is considered the benchmark to compare that lens, an $1,800 top of the line premium prime lens, is evidence of just how far this lens has gone to propel Sigma forward. It really, it's this lens that I would argue is probably the most important lens that Sigma has produced in the last 20 years or more. It's this lens that um, both introduced Sigma's new global vision and showed us a beautiful new design philosophy that has been a hit that resonated with photographers around the world, but also with their whole new global initiative, their art series, contemporary and uh, sport lines. It was a complete new rebranding for Sigma and by the sales success of this lens and other art series lens to follow, it's been very successful. Over the last uh, few years, I've reviewed a number of Sigma art series lenses and I found that there is a certain consistency with them, both uh, for the most part with their strengths and with their weaknesses. When it comes to those strengths, these are amazingly high resolving lenses that really um, compete with lenses that cost far more with them. Although the new 35mm f1.4 L Mark II sets a new high standard for resolution and overall image quality, really the Sigma is still not very far behind. And it really takes, as I've done in a series of um, uh, different comparisons, I call it the 35mm shootout, but in one of those we took a look at resolution and there are a few things that you can pull out if you look at a, a pixel level in the detail, but overall, these, this lens is still very, very close. And so image resolution is certainly very much a high. And when it comes to price, the Sigma is still in a completely different ballpark compared to the Canon. The Canon, as I mentioned, retails at $1,800, while the Sigma is still around $900. Obviously, at half the price, it represents a pretty significant savings for those that just aren't really to go that far. And for that reason, this lens has ended up in a number of photographers' bags around the world. On top of that, it also has uh, fast autofocus. It focuses quietly. Um, beyond that, it also has great color rendition. It has good contrast. It does have some chromatic aberrations that you can see in a few of these images. But at the same time, it really has them fairly well controlled, particularly when its original competitor, main competitor, was the 35mm f1.4L, uh, what we would now call the Mark I, or the first one of those lenses. And it, it suffered with some fairly pronounced chromatic aberrations. And so the Sigma is ahead of it in that regard, although it's been leapfrogged by the new 35L Mark II. On top of that, it does a very credible job with uh, its nine-bladed aperture producing a nice sunburst. Um, it does fairly well with its uh, flare resistance, although as I did in another one of the segments of the 35 millimeter shootout, I did note that it could perform better in that regard. Overall, however, the image quality, it has a lot going for it and very little negatives to really harp on on that. It does vignette fairly heavily wide open, but certainly no worse than the new 35L Mark II. On top of that, let me give you a few quick specs on the lens. It is 94 millimeters long. So when it was introduced, it was actually considered a large 35 millimeter lens. Since that time, there's been a trend with the higher resolution bodies that are coming out to produce lenses that uh, are also larger and heavier. And as a result, this lens is considerably smaller in just about every facet than the new 35L Mark II. So it's 94 millimeters long. It is 665 grams. The new 35L Mark II is a good almost 110 uh, more grams than that. It has a 67 millimeter front filter thread. 
And then optically, it's 13 elements in 11 groups. And it can focus down to 30 centimeters or right around one foot and has a maximum magnification of 0 0.20 times. Now, none of those figures now are groundbreaking or class leading, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's right there in the hunt and uh, on all of those particular stats. The 67 millimeter front filter thread is of course a very easy one, very common one to uh, use and very likely one that will be shared with other lenses. As I mentioned, this was considered large uh, when it came out, and of course it is, it is and continues to be a very beautiful lens. And as far as the actual aesthetic quality, I would still probably pick it over the new Canon 35L Mark II. Although when it comes to the actual build, the 35L is really kind of leagues ahead of this lens. It is not just weather sealed, but it is extremely robustly weather sealed and uh, has a very high grade internal construction that's at a whole different level than the Sigma. But as far as the aesthetics, it really is quite beautiful. Um, as I mentioned, it was large at its introduction, but now amongst all of the various art series lenses, this really is one of the smallest of them. And almost every one that I've reviewed since is actually physically larger than this particular lens. One thing that I will note that I consider a bit of a uh, mark against the, the build and the function of the lens is that it has an incredibly small um, focus throw, only about 90 degrees or so. And so the distance between minimum focus and infinity focus is really quite small. And particularly when you get out on the dial to right after about um, six feet, the di distance between six feet and infinity focus is incredibly minute. So should you have to manually focus, I find this lens is quite a challenge to nail down proper focus um, if you're at six feet and beyond. And that kind of carries over into really the greatest downfall of the lens. And that is that at times the autofocus is inconsistent. There are a lot of stories out there of photographers that have lamented the fact that while they loved the image quality, the optical quality of the lens, they just couldn't get it to consistently autofocus for them. And unfortunately, I found that to be true to a certain degree. It did fairly well with stills, although periodically it would produce just a completely random type miss. Uh, for example, and this was, uh, this was stopped down to f3.5, I believe. But take a look at this um, example here of a leaf. I was right close to it, and um, according to software, it shows that focus was properly locked. But as you can see, it's really not focused right at all. Beyond that, it did reasonably well, except I found, and perhaps it's because of that, sh that short focus throw, that when I was trying to autofocus on um, objects before infinity, but out further than about 15 feet, I missed a fair number of those. And that was particularly obvious when I was comparing the lens in an event with the 35L Mark II. And I found that my hit rate using AF servo was considerably lower, about 64, 65% compared to over 93% for the Canon. And so um, that certainly is a factor to consider if you're looking at this. At the same time, there are some photographers that after using calibrating or perhaps using the Sigma USB dock, um, they've got theirs locked in and they report that they have good autofocus results. And so, as the internet saying goes, your mileage may vary when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, this particular lens still packs an incredible amount of punch for under $900. In fact, as uh, this image, give you a few images to look out here, at wide open, F1.4, you can shoot landscape images that still have an incredible amount of resolution um, from that and resolution really quite strong out towards the edges of the frame. And so if you are uh, three years into its introduction, this is still a very credible option to uh, some of the newer options and uh, some others to consider. The new Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8 has a higher maximum magnification and in my experience, a little bit more uh, consistent autofocus I still consider the 35 millimeter F2 IS to also be a great alternative if you're a Canon shooter. Beyond that, Sigma's own 24 to 35 millimeter F2 is an interesting option that gives you a little a bit of a zoom range and covers a couple of other important focal lengths like 24 millimeters and 28 millimeters in one lens. And it certainly is a worthy alternative. And if you want the absolute best and you're a Canon shooter and you've got the money, go for the 35 L Mark II. It may be about degrees, but those degrees certainly set the lens apart, particularly if you are a working professional and you'll find that the lens will pay for itself 
and shots that you will nail that you may or may not get with the Sigma. But overall, for most users, the Sigma is going to be probably one of the most attractive alternatives. You want to take a look at the various videos from the 35mm shootout, and that might help your decision for yourself. But before I freeze to death out here, I'm going to bring this review to a close. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Have a great day.